This is Francis. Um, welcome to the Oracle Conference. Praise God. I believe that uh, the Lord is doing a great work in our midst. And I believe also that uh, other ministers are going to be given so much empowerment of the Spirit to impact the life and the nature of God. Hallelujah. As we continue on this conference, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, I also want to thank um, our hosts, Pastor Dan and the Pastor Destiny of Hyunze for heeding the call to, um, to set up this kind of a conference called the Oracle Conference. Hallelujah. The Oracle Conference. Praise the Lord. And this season, we're dealing with nothing else but the priesthood. Praise God. Now, uh, if we are to zero in on the priesthood, we would see that uh, priests are not just ordinary people. Priests are not just regular uh, people that live a lascivious life and live a life of maybe fun, enjoyment, um, uh, drunkenness and things like that. Uh, a priest is someone that is hemmed in, someone that is separated, someone that um, has been called, praise the Lord, and someone that is a mediator between man, hallelujah, and God. Of course, we know that God is the ultimate oracle, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Blessed be God. Hallelujah. Now, um, when we say that man is a mediator, is it just anyone that uh, uh, comes in as that place of mediation? We know that in the Old Testament, the mediator was um, the man called Moses. He was the one that uh, was given the authority, given the ordination, hallelujah, to serve as a servant in the house of God. And the Bible tells us that he was faithful in all his ways. He was faithful because he uh, understood the call. He understood that this kind of assignment is not the assignment that you are halfway here and halfway there. Now, the book of Hebrews tells us in the, uh, chapter 11 that uh, Moses, when he was come of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, rejected the pleasures of Egypt that he knew was going to last for just a season, praise God, and rather chose the reproach and the suffering of the children of God, children of Israel. And he chose that as something that is of a high esteem and had benefits. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we know that the, uh, the uh, kind of priesthood that Moses officiated in is similar to that which uh, uh, Yeshua uh, officiated in in a little degree because the Bible says that he officiated as a servant. But when Yeshua came into the picture, he did not officiate as a servant, as it were, but rather he officiated as a son. Did you see the difference? Hallelujah. Blessed be God. Now, each one of them used tokens. Okay? So uh, I would love to uh, title this particular session uh, the tokens of the um, um, the priesthood. Hallelujah! The tokens of the priesthood. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. Hmm. Now, what are tokens? Tokens are those um, things that um, pertain to the ministration uh, um, of the priest before 
the oracle or before the father. Let's look at uh, the uh, book of uh, Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 5. Uh, I'll read. I read this before in the last um, session. So here it says in verse 1, it says, Every high priest taken from amongst men is appointed for men in things pertaining to God that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin. Did you see? Hallelujah. So there are two kings that are required for this kind of uh, um, assignment or this kind of uh, uh, offerings or this kind of uh, service. Praise the Lord. So remember, we're dealing with the tokens Okay, of the priesthood. What are the things that uh, the priest needs to engage, activate, and do the work of the ministry? <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, if you remember, I had continued on uh, uh, Moses' faithfulness in the house of God. Now, Yeshua himself, also, we know that the Bible tells us that he did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but rather, what did he do? He submitted by humbling himself to that position of a servant so that he can be able to do God's will. He submitted in obedience, so which means that a priest must be obedient to the commandments and the instructions of the oracle. You can't do your will against the will of the oracle. Satan or Lucifer had his own will and that cost him his position. Now, this is very, very important while conducting your um, assignment as a priest. If you remember in the first seminar uh, session, we had said that uh, 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 Abihu and Nedab, which were the older sons of uh, Aaron, went and got strange fire hurriedly and wanted to offer that to the Father. And it cost them their lives. Not because God is um, wicked, but because there are consequences when you go against the demands of the oracle. Praise the Lord. So you can't afford not to be faithful as a priest. You cannot afford to do your own thing as a priest. You can't even afford to have your own will. Hallelujah. I remember when Yeshua was about to go to uh, the cross. He had to take time out and pray in the garden of Gethsemane. And he prayed so fervently that uh, the Bible records that his tears or his sweat was also mixed with blood. Hallelujah. He had to forcibly, he had to forcefully subject himself, pull himself out of that realm where no one could harm him. And by prayers, brought himself to that place of vulnerability. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So much so that uh, when he did this, what happened? He was able to submit to the will of the Father because he said, if it be your will, he said, um, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, he said, not my will, but your will be done 
Hallelujah. Praise God. So you have to always know as a priest that you must do the will of the oracle. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's very important. <laughs> it's very important. Hallelujah. Had he not done that prayer, had he not prayed fervently, had Yeshua not prayed fervently, praise God, it probably would have been impossible Hallelujah, to capture him. Because the Bible said he prayed so much that there was no strength inside of him. And it was required for angels to come and strengthen him. Just enough for him to go through the process and uh, submit his body for death. Hallelujah. Now, even after all this, when they came to arrest him, and he asked them, say, who are you guys looking for? And they said, we're looking for Yeshua Nazareth. And he said, I am. <laughs> Immediately he said, I am. They fell down. What pushed them down? is the power of the eternal life that he acquired by journeying here on earth. Don't forget that he stripped himself of his earthly glory. How do I know that? I know that by reading the book of John, when he started placing the demand on the Father to receive back the glory that he had before, before he, uh, 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 he came down to this earthly dimension. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, so we, we, it's important for us to note that for you to be a priest serving the oracle, you are a slave to the oracle. You are a born slave. There must be that deep love, that deep desire inside of you to serve the oracle. Hallelujah. Serve the oracle that means that you are not everything about you yourself your wife your children are all submitted to the demands of the oracle and you must be willing to release your children hallelujah as the next person who might have to be the priest or the custodian of the oracle now, it's also important to understand that you must give your life and give your body to the, the habitation of the oracle or the God that you're serving. That's why the Bible tells us in the book of Romans that we should present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is our reasonable service. Hallelujah. He calls it the reasonable service. So, submitting your body, praise the Lord, as a living sacrifice, okay, is what the scriptures call reasonable service. Romans chapter 12. Hallelujah. And then it is not enough for you as a priest, okay, that serves the oracle to mix up the affairs of this world. Because it says that a good soldier or a good priest a serious priest does not entangle himself with the affairs of this present world because this present world was designed to militate against your own priesthood because the person who created the world or babylon did that in priestly warfare where he actually crafted a system that tampers with the flesh first of all it tampers with the mind or oh, let me reframe this he first of all tampers with the eyes okay tampers with the flesh hallelujah and then the end result is that it presents to you the pride of life by the time you engage yourself in the uh, lost of the eyes. You now journey to the lost of the flesh. And then finally, it 
gives you the crown of the pride of life. By the time you get to that stage, you have fortified yourself as a military enemy against God. Because the Bible says that anyone who entangles himself with the affairs of this world, or anyone who is a friend to this world, is an enemy of God. Can you see that? Hallelujah. So can you see what you see that it's not easy? That's why um, you, uh, it's not just anyone. Someone who is a glutton, someone who is a drunkard, someone who is a womanizer, someone who um, is so playful, someone who is not mindful, someone who is not intense, cannot afford to be a priest. Because you will make so many careless mistakes that will cost you your life, and if possible, might even cost you your whole generation. Did you see? <laughs> so it's not a playful thing. Now, what is it that will make you be this dedicated? You must be diligent. Hallelujah. Now, if you see that book of Romans again, chapter 12, it tells us that we should not be conformed to this world. Don't allow this world to mold you as a priest. But rather it says, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. Can you see? So you must be someone who is fully ready to engage the volume of the books so that you can be able to re, re, um, you can be able to uh, re, uh, renew your mind okay and by by way of process end up transforming yourself from that state of flesh to the realm and the dimensions of the spirit where you can now minister endlessly because the bible says that the kind of priesthood that you and i are supposed to be involved in or engaged in or the order into which you have been called is the order of the priesthood of melchizedek which is being powered by the power of an endless life hallelujah now in the Old Testament, I don't want to go too far into this, the Aaronic priesthood is hindered by um, the span of life of the priest. Can you see? So every, every uh, dispensation, you see that uh, a priest has to be changed. Why? Because of his age, by reason of age. But this priesthood, it's an endless one. <laughs> Once you are signed in, your whole life, you are a born slave. You are a born servant and a born slave to the oracle. Hallelujah. Praise God. So the question now arises, what is it that actually engineers and powers this lifestyle? What is it? First of all, is the life of faith. And what is faith? The Bible tells us that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that is not seen. And it says, by these, the elders obtained the good report, Hebrews chapter, um, Hebrews chapter 11, okay? But you see, what kind of report? What kind of report is it? What kind, how, how, how do you define this faith? The Bible tells us that faith is an energy of God. It says it's the substance. So there is a substance, okay, of things that are hoped for. So where did the substance come from? The substance comes from hearing. Okay? Now, if you see Hebrews chapter 1, the Bible says that God at sundry times and in diverse manners spoke to our fathers, okay, through the prophets. But in these last days, he's speaking to us through his son. So there's something that the son is saying, okay? Now the book of Romans tells us that faith cometh, because there has to be an origin from where you, uh, people can go and buy or acquire this energy. It says faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Praise the Lord. 
So inside God's word, there is a kind of energy or life, okay, that when the man hears it, it causes him to change his life, change his ways, and begin to walk in a particular way. And once he gets into that, that walk doesn't does, it's not just a journey, but it is something that as you are moving step by step, something is entering into you. You are receiving the life of, of God. Can you see? And that would cause me to say we should look back at the flyer, the theme or the subtitle, the promise, the path, and then the priesthood. Can you see? So it is very important for you to know. I remember when one of uh, or some of the Jews asked uh, Yeshua, that what must we do? <laughs> what must we do to do the work of God? Yeshua turned to them and said, do the one thing, only believe. And I said, only believe? Yes, only believe. So which means that belief is another major token. Okay? It's another major token. Without believing, there's no way. There's no way that the, the life of faith can be transferred to you. Hebrews chapter um, 11 verse 6 tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please the oracle. Why? It says because he who must come or he who must journey to the oracle or journey to the Father must know or believe that he is. Or if I might be able to switch it, it says, the, the Father will tell you, you must believe that I am. <laughs> Hallelujah. You must believe that I am. And that I always reward those who diligently seek me. Can you see? And I would always reward you with myself. Praise God. Blessed be God. So it is very crucial for us to understand this simple but yet profound basics. Did you see? You can't say that you are a priest and you live a life that is contrary to the beckon and call and demands of the oracle that you are officiating before. You can't say that you are a priest and then you don't know your way. Did you see? In the great, permit me to use the word shrine or tabernacle of the oracle. You must know. You must be conversant. Okay? With all the different key spots. Okay? You must be conversant about the feasts. Okay? You must know about the feast of the Passover. You must know about the feast okay, of unleavened bread. You must know about the feast of uh, first fruits. You must know about the feast of Pentecost. You must know about the feasts okay, of trumpets, atonement, and finally, the feast of tabernacle, where by way of your journeying in obedience and in, in the uh, obedience and the death of your old life, okay, you must have killed and mortified the deeds of the flesh by the leading and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Okay, to the extent that but when you finally get to the Feast of Tabernacle, you will have been emptied. So much so, there will be so much vacancy and allowance for the great oracle to come and tabernacle inside of you. Did you see that? Praise God. So any priest who doesn't know the journey, any priest who doesn't know the map or the road map, any priest that does not know the path, the path 
any priest that does not know that he has to look for the promise is really not serious. Look at Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Can you see? Nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of discomfort, but rather in the law of the Lord does he meditate day and night so that he can become like a tree that is planted by the rivers of living waters. Can you see? Very important. So there is something that you become. Now, one other token that uh, I would want us to talk about. You see, we have talked about <coughs> um, by way of your um, priesthood, you can't be a priest that does not engage in feasts. <laughs> you can't be a priest that does not know that there's something called the Feast of Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of uh, First Fruits, the Feast of um, Pentecost, the Feast of uh, um, Trumpets, the Feast of uh, Atonement, and then the Feast of Tabernacles. You can't say you're a priest without knowing this because who is, who is the person who is going to be involved in all that? Who is going to be the one that is officiating all these things? It's the priest. <coughs> Hallelujah. Blessed be God. Now, the son, Yeshua, who is our high priest, what did he do before he went to glory? Just before he went even to, during the feast of the Passover. What did he do? The Bible records that his uh, disciples asked him where was his preference? Where was his choice of location for the Passover of that year? And he chose a particular place. He said, when you get to a particular uh, uh, location, you see a man carrying um, um, water. Wait, follow him. And if he asks you, tell him, the master is asking where you have prepared for him to have his Passover. And he will take you there. Can you see? Praise the Lord. Now, during the feast, or while they were at table, what did they do? The Bible said that he took bread. It's important to note that there are, this is one ultimate ritual in our priesthood, okay? Praise the Lord. It's a ritual because blood has to flow, okay? There has to be death, okay? Praise the Lord. Now, this time is so unique and it's so different and this is the ultimate sacrifice because this time around is the high priest that sacrifices himself. He does not sacrifice a bull or sacrifice a lamb or a ram. This one doesn't need to be purified because by way of his journey in his earthly tabernacle, the Bible records that he never sinned in thoughts, in words, or in deeds. So he was already purified. Can you see? Whereas, the book of Hebrew tells us that the uh, Aaronic priesthood has to offer gifts and sacrifices. Okay? For himself and the people. Praise God. For sins committed. Now this one did not commit any sin. And yet he offered himself as a sacrifice, willing sacrifice. So that night, Bob records that he took bread. Okay? He broke it. Because we know that the bread is unleavened bread. 
all right bread that does not have any leaven in it so he broke it and he told his disciples he says take this is my body that is broken for you take it hallelujah so remember one of the tokens is the bread the bread signifies represents symbolizes the flesh of Yeshua the Bible said he was given a body that looked like sinful flesh for the purpose of death on the cross now when they had suffered the Bible said he took the cup of wine and he said this is my blood the blood of the new an everlasting covenant hallelujah which was shed for me for you and for many for the remission of sins it says take and drink hallelujah praise the lord so you see this is awesome this is so powerful so i don't need to go and kill a ram i don't need to go and and, and kill a goat or even the bull. All I just need is the tokens, which was introduced in the book of Genesis by a king called Melchizedek. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 14, I believe, that when uh, Abraham was on his return from his slaughter of the five kings, that he met a strange being called Melchizedek who is the prince, the king of righteousness and the king of peace. And when this king saw him, the king said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And he brought tokens of bread and wine. It is that order of Melchizedek, that order of the priesthood of Melchizedek, that you and I, are engaged in. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm hoping that we will continue in this awesome uh, uh, conference and I'm hoping that other ministers are going to chip in their own uh, uh, bit into this thing so that at the end of the day we'll be fully garnished and fully packaged for the work of the ministry. God bless you. Hallelujah.